What's up YouTube and welcome to the Acura Audio Garage. So this is our first video. I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be a very popular question we get. So we have an 05 Acura TL base model. We've put an aftermarket radio in this car already. This car has subs already. Now we're plagued with something I'm sure some of you have is rear deck rattle. So this little cover in the back will rattle or you have a speaker back there that's blown. So this is a very common issue that one of those rear speakers will blow, they come detached. Let me show you exactly kind of what happens to that speaker. All right, so here we have a speaker out of a different TL. This is the rear deck speaker. This is what it looks like. And sometimes what will happen is the actual glue will start uh, separating here at the edge. What happened, this one's actually ripped just from old age and wear. See, it's ripped there. It also has another small rip over here. So ultimately, old speaker, it's going to wear. Eventually, it's going to go. Um, you can see right on the back, it's 2 ohm, 20 watt. Uh, so we want to find a replacement. Right, so when thinking about replacing your factory speakers, there's a couple components to the speaker that you have to think about. And they're really going to boil down to these here. So how much wattage you can handle continuously, the sensitivity of the speaker, the resistance of the speaker, the magnet powering that voice coil, and then the frequency range. So what the hell do all of those mean? So the resistance of the speaker is something that you're just gonna have to match. So this is a two ohm speaker, and I'm gonna say this is the continuous power rating of 20 watts. I'm not sure if this is max or continuous, but I'm gonna go with continuous because the factory amp can't put out that much power. So if this is a two ohm speaker that can handle 20 watts, what other information are we missing? We're missing the magnet composition, which isn't too important for our case. We are missing the frequency range, which we're gonna figure out in a bit. And we're also missing the sensitivity of this speaker. I'm gonna say that the sensitivity of the speaker is relatively low because of the old school magnet that it has. But that's just me guessing, I don't really know. If you do know, please put it down in the comments. So if you're replacing the speaker in your Acura, those are the things you're gonna to have to pay attention to. All right guys, before I continue with the video, I'm gonna ask that you subscribe and give a like. This is the Acura Audio Garage channel. This channel is gonna be focused mainly on Acuras. We deal a lot with TLs, we're starting to deal a lot with MDXs, but we're always dealing with different Acuras, so we're always gonna have some hints other tips to help you out so I recommend subscribing sticking around for those and just give the video a like share it with someone it really helps the channel grow uh, we're just starting this channel out I'm really excited about it so if you could help us out I'd really appreciate that and again it takes a lot to get all these resources together to provide you with this content so I just take a minute to subscribe like the video really appreciate that thank you so how do you figure out the resistance or power handling if they're not on the speaker. I would recommend Googling it. We can determine the resistance of this speaker with our voltmeter. If we put it to resistance and we basically just touch both ends of here and here, eventually our meter, hold on, let me put it into view. Eventually our meter we'll get to the two ohms. Come on. See, it's climbing, climbing, climbing. There you go. So the resistance is two ohms. So if you have a voltmeter and your Acura doesn't have the label on the speaker, that's how you can measure the resistance because measuring the resistance is gonna be the most important thing. If you put a speaker with one ohm resistance, 0.5 ohm resistance, etc., you could cause damage to the factory amp. In this case, if you replace it with a one ohm speaker, I can tell you, you are gonna short this channel on the factory amp and it's not gonna work. If you replace it with a higher ohm speaker, so if you replace it with something like this Hyphonics here, which is a four ohm speaker, you're not gonna cause any trouble to your factory amp, but you will cause some trouble to yourself because the overall volume of the speaker will be less. So because of the higher resistance, it can handle less wattage or less wattage can be sent to it is the way I should say it. So in that case, <clears throat> it's not gonna result in a proportional um, decrease in volume, meaning that this speaker is gonna be able to be twice as loud 
as that speaker because this is four ohms and this is two ohms. It doesn't work that way. It's not one to one proportions um, or one a one to one relationship. Um, some of you might not even hear the difference. Some of you will obviously replace all four speakers in the car with four ohm speakers instead of two ohm speakers. You're definitely going to hear the difference. But just replacing the rear deck, you might not notice it. Um, if you're a real keen sound guy, then you will. But <clears throat> here I have a couple of speakers laid out for us to look at um, that we can examine the qualities and see if they'll make good replacements. The other thing I want to talk to you about is that all Acura speakers uh, from ranges like 2000 to about 2008, 9 are relatively the same. They didn't change them uh, till about 2011. I might be wrong. Certain models might have different speakers. But here's what I'll show you. This speaker is from an MDX 2011 MDX or yeah, I believe it's a 2011 MDX and you can see it looks different, much taller speaker inside a different mount, but overall it's the same shape and actually it is the same speaker. So this is just the mount. This is the same molded speaker, only we're using a different magnet to power the speaker this time. There's different metals ultimately. Uh, but you can see this is also a 2 ohm speaker, 20 watt. And the composition of the speaker is a little different, but the actual faceplate is the same. So you can change Acura speakers, at least from the rear deck, or full size 6.5s across the board within your Acuras. So this guide can help you uh, change the speakers in your MDX or any other Acura that has this same shaped speaker. Most of the time, there are two ohms, but of course, confirm that, look at that before you go and move forward. All right. All right, so let's look at replacements. So here we have our factory speaker. Here we have Amazon's bestseller, the uh, Hyphonics ZS65CXS 6.5 coaxial 4 ohm. Now, we don't know the frequency response that our speaker needs to have, but I can tell you that the frequency response on this bad boy right here is from 60 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So it's not gonna hit, your, hit the lowest of bass, but your rear speakers really aren't always designed to do so. But one of the qualities of this speaker that rules it out is the fact that it's four ohms. This 300 watt rating marketing departments love to do that. The continuous power handling of the speaker is really 50 watts. So it could be a replacement if you're in a tight spot and you just need sound but I wouldn't fully recommend it because the sensitivity of the speaker is only 89 dB. So it's gonna require um, more power than other speakers to reach the same volume. So when it comes to sensitivity, you want the highest sensitivity possible. It's gonna require the least amount of power to move the speaker or voice coil um, compared to the other one. So if you have a speaker that is 89 dB and the other one's 93 dB, the 93 dB speaker is gonna require less power to be louder. So ultimately it'll result in a louder speaker when you put it to the same amount of power as this one. Now that's not 100% all the time, but relatively why sensitivity matters. It's just that speaker can do more with the power that is provided to it than this one can. Now, the last thing when it comes to the replacement speaker is the mounting depth and the actual mounting pattern behind it. So, as you can see, this speaker has a couple of holes. One there has three main mounting holes. So, when you put the speakers over each other, those mounting holes don't really line up, and that's when you know you're gonna need an adapter. So, any speaker we choose today, we're gonna need an adapter to sit it in the factory location properly. So the next thing that matters then is our magnet depth and width. So this is relatively small magnet. You can see that the actual factory one was a little bigger, a little thicker. So now let's look at another set of speakers. So these Amazon's best sellers. For those of you that want to go really loud, we have this nice scar coaxial speaker right here. Uh, can handle up to 100 watts RMS. Sensitivity on the scar is 89 dB, but again, it's a four ohm speaker, kind of puts it out of the ballpark for us. Now, if you don't mind, or if you're going with an aftermarket amp and you're not using a factory amp, then the sense it's, then the resistance really doesn't matter to you. You wanna go with four ohm, it won't matter. But if you're keeping the factory amp and just replacing the speakers, then you wanna pay attention to the resistance. So here we go, coaxial, 100 watts RMS, four ohm. You can see the magnet's a lot bigger, 
overall uh, mounting depth is going to be thicker. There is really no problem in the rear deck of the TL for mounting depth because it sits uh, within a chamber that really won't matter. Uh, but in your door, this will matter. So if you're replacing the MDX speaker, this might go past, oh, snap. This might go past, see, it goes past the edge of the adapter and that makes it too thick. It won't fit in the door properly. So you wanna take that into account when you're selecting your speakers as well. So the SCAR, not a bad option, especially if you're going to be using an aftermarket amp. But in our situation, we're keeping the factory amp and that's what the premise we're gonna move forward with. So now here we have a nice Hertz coax, I mean a component speaker. Obviously you wouldn't put this in the rear deck because you need a coaxial speaker back there with a tweeter built in. I mean, you could fit this back there and mount your own tweeter somewhere, uh, but it just make the job a little more complicated. But I wanted to show this speaker because the magnet's so much bigger, it's so much more of a taller speaker, but you can see this is also four ohms. The sensitivity of this speaker is 92.3 and the resistance is four ohms. Um, power handling is gonna be 105 watts. So this speaker would be overkill for the factory amp. It can handle so much more power than the factory amp can provide it. And honestly, it wouldn't sound as good um, without adding some additional power to it. Just the factory amp isn't gonna do the speaker justice. So if you're going high end audio, you might as well just replace the amp. Don't stick with the crappy factory one. Then last on our list is the speakers we'll actually be using. Today. So the reason why we chose these infinities is because they were in budget. You can see the model number. They were in budget and they met the criteria that we need. So max power handling, uh, actually it doesn't, this continuous power handling is 60 watts, max 180 watts. Our frequency response is 53 hertz to 221K. Then we have a resistance of three ohms and a sensitivity of 93 dB. So these are perfect for the factory amplifier because they can handle more power than they can put out, but they're not requiring so much power that the factory amp won't drive them correctly. They are a shallow sort of speaker. Um, and also the sensitivity is really high, which means they won't take a ton of power. Most importantly, a long side power base this is the lowest impedance you can now get. Infinity used to make two ohm speakers. I'm not sure when it changed, but Powerbase now makes two ohm replacement speakers for the factory. There might be other companies out there as well. Feel free to leave them down in the comments, but this is readily available. You can go to pretty much any auto store, I mean audio store and pick these up. You could find these online. They're like, again, very highly available to anyone watching this video. And that really didn't play a part in this, uh, selection of speaker but it's just something that's a bonus for what we're doing so let me actually show you the speaker all right so here we have the infinity speaker and what's nice about the reference line is you actually get adapters so alongside this beautiful cover which we aren't going to use we get an adapter plate. And this is awesome because you don't have to buy an additional part. You can just use this. You're just gonna have to cut it up some. So if we overlay this over the factory speaker, you could see that we definitely have some choices here on where we can line things up. We just have to figure out where the best one will be, but this will be extremely helpful in mounting the factory speaker um, and mounting the aftermarket speaker in the factory location. Then as you can see, here's our actual speaker. Again, cone depth, not too deep, almost relatively the same as a factory speaker. Overall size of the speaker is very similar to the factory one. So this is why uh, we kind of chose this and the customer agreed that this would be the best option for him. So you can see also the tweeter has a attenuation. I believe that's what it's called. So I think it's gonna be zero dB and then if you press it down, it's plus three dB. And it's kind of tilted uh, in an angle so that if we mount it correctly, we can get it to bounce off the back glass so you can hear it a little more. So this is the speaker we're going to use. 
Now let's actually get into the job. So for the TL, in order to get this rear deck off to expose these speakers, you're going to need to take off the bottom seat, the back seat, this cover, the cover on the opposite side, and then obviously this rear deck cover. Now you wanna be really careful uh, when doing this. Step one is to pull the little tabs that are underneath the seat. Just mess with them a little till you can get them out. Step two is to undo all the bolts. And then there's gonna be bolts behind here that you wanna to get to, and then slowly take out your clips. Again, I'm gonna put the camera where you can see me do this and give you tips along the way, but that's ultimately what you have to do to get that rear deck off. All right guys, so when you're gonna take this rear seat out, again, there are little clips underneath here. I'll show them to you in a second. Uh, but the most important thing of getting the seat out is gonna be the bolt that goes right here. And I can tell that this has been taken apart before because these aren't put together correctly yet. Um, and this is extremely dirty. Whoever did this had their hands dirty and touched multiple parts of this car, which is a big no-no, man. Just clean your hands before you start touching stuff. But anyways, those clips will allow you to raise the seat up. Once you raise the seat up, you can kind of angle it upward to get you a view into where that bolt is. You're obviously gonna need some light, but this one, again, someone's been in here before, so they didn't put it back together correctly. So you can see, here is our actual bolt. Um, they weren't able to fit it back. Um, so after that, you can just slide the seat forward and obviously take it out of the car. Now here are those clips underneath the seat that you're gonna feel for. You have to raise the seat a little because your fingers are gonna get to about here. Then you'll be able to get it. You, I normally grab it like this. You can use other fingers. And you can see that release mechanism. Now you'll go to pull this, it'll be very tough. It's because the way the seat is resting on this clip, you're gonna wanna push the seat down or massage it up and down so it just releases very easily like so. There should be no resistance very minimal resistance when you go to pull this back. If you're yanking on it like crazy, you will break it. And it's because the seat isn't pressuring this clip correctly. So again, just massage the seat till it releases this. As you can see, either this stuff made its way under the seat magically, or someone has been here before. Uh, we'll determine that in a second. All right guys, so the next step is we gotta get this back seat out. So again, there are bolts behind here. You want to be very careful when entering with your socket because when you go to pull out it's very easy for the leather to catch like this and take your socket off your ratchet so you want to get your finger in there bend it to one side or the other and then pull it out if you just pull back out fast this is going to get lost in there i'm telling you right now it's happened to me plenty of times then you have a bolt here another one on the opposite side and one in the middle that you have to deal with. So I'll get those out and I'll show you that next. All right guys, so here's the bolt that holds on the uh, back of the seat and it goes on like this. So it hooks onto the back of the seat like so. So this is, you basically have to push up, unhook it, and you're able to get this out. You can also just get these all the way out but it's not necessary to take them out. You can just unhook. Again, that's the top side where the headrest is. So it just hooks on, you can unhook it off. Now we also, our center bolt that I told you about uh, wasn't put back either. So that's something that was missing too. Uh, we have a nice razor blade right there. Uh, I'm going to put this one back and then we'll get started on these side panels. Another very common mistake, uh, something I forgot to cover, sorry, is the seat belts. This is the only tricky one. You just have to slide it through the groove that's on the seats. But another mistake that a lot of people will make is assuming that these come off first. So these don't actually have to come off, but if you do want them to come off, you take this off first, then this. There is a bracket up here that links these two and when you try to take this off first it will break so i'm gonna get this off and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about all right guys so again 
whoever put this back on didn't understand how to seat these correctly so this is an on all the way so I could just pull it out again reach in here come with your hand reach this back it should loosen up like so and then you'll be able to pull the entire thing up and away and hopefully not hit yourself in the face um, and now we can start getting at the back deck all right guys so now we can start getting at the back deck and to get this started I normally just use my arms you can use a pry tool, but normally I'm in there, my hands like so. You're just lifting up clips. So the same clips that are found, yeah, I look kind of scary in this lighting, huh? The same clips that are found right here are the ones that are on this. So as we begin to pull up, we'll begin to release those clips. And then there's some at the end. To get those, normally what I do is I just stick my arm in here and lift like that. And that's enough to release them. And it looks like they put speakers in here already. Ah. You know, I have this weird attraction for messed up cars. Everyone always loves to bring me their messed up car, I guess, because like when it's easy to do, other people can do it. Um, but so this car, Best Buy put an amp and sub in uh, and we're fixing that they didn't do a terrible job I have respect for the install the guy kind of looked like he cared what he was doing uh, the only issue is where they grabbed the sub signal they look like they grabbed it off the rear speakers I'm not really sure what they did hundred uh, percent but it's not the way I would have done it again nothing terrible there just kind of confusing as to why they did it that way the other thing is uh, I put well, yeah, we put a JVC radio in this car. Sounds pretty good. I assume the customer knew what was going on with this car. And maybe he does. Maybe he just didn't tell me the truth. But it sounded to me like the rattling back here. All right, guys. So, like I was saying, I didn't know that the customer had aftermarket speakers. I assumed he would know. He never mentioned it. So, normally when you have like a rattle or a plop back here it's this or one of these speakers that has gone bad but his speakers have already been replaced so what it actually is is a factory subwoofer going bad and that's an easy fix we wouldn't have to have done all this we could have just unplugged it from underneath here and killed the rattle um but it's not a loss here because we're also going to be rerouting where he's getting the signal from. So yeah, we could have just unplugged it and not worried about it, but we'll actually remove it from back here because we have an RCA source now up front, the radio. When this was put in, the factory radio was still in. Um, but yeah, it is, it is what it is. I am going to disconnect the factory sub, leave it disconnected, and then uh, undo that red wire you see in the back. Also, the last tip, you don't have to fully remove this to take all the seat belts out and stuff. You can just lay it like this and work over it. If you're really picky, obviously take it out, but it's not necessary. And now you have access to the rear deck. That's really it for getting this apart. I'm gonna put it back together. When I put it back together, I'll show you some of the tips that go with that. All right, guys, so we're gonna remove this rear speaker now. Just for demonstration purposes, you can see but here's why kind of adapters are necessary. It's simply because, what the f It's simply because, this is crazy, I don't understand why they would do this. Anyways, um, the reason why the adapters are necessary is so that you don't do this to your car, or that hole that's barely in, or that hole. Um, it just makes it so that you don't have to go crazy um, with your install and it's a lot easier. For this, you need a special bit that could be able to drill down or a shallow enough um, drill to get in here. But as you can see, this is what they attempted to do to put a line out converter here. And again, you don't need to cut these. There are adapters that are sold um, that can go there. So back here, there's actually an adapter that goes here that they've cut off and then attached these two. Um, that's unnecessary. You could have used those adapters so you wouldn't have to have cut anything because they didn't solder these. In the end, they just attached them how the other ones would have attached. So I am going to clean this up and then get back to you. You know what's the worst part about all this? 
it's not that someone already did this poorly, is that the customer won't spend the money to fix it. And I mean, this is gonna sound fine to the average person. It's just when it comes to quality of work, it's just like, it's like cringe, cause you're like, who would be okay with doing that? But again, sometimes your boss is like, yo, get this car done and you have to work with what you got and this is what you do, uh, cause you have to make it work. Uh, but I mean, that's just not our style here. And everyone's different. I mean, it's just a rant, but I, it's just, it sucks. It just sucks. Right, guys, before I put the cover back on, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what's going on here. So here's a kicker four ohm speaker. Remember the beginning of the video, we talked about four ohm speakers, how they would sound a little less. Um, they wouldn't be able to use all the power the factory amp can put out and they wouldn't be as loud. Obviously the customer didn't even realize it was back here. So he didn't even notice. Again, average person won't notice the difference. Then the last thing I wanted to show you is for this factory subwoofer replacement. We have the adapter plate in our store available now for you to use this because it has four holes to mount it. And those four holes don't really line up with any subwoofer. So what you can do is use our adapter and then mount your subwoofer to our available 12 holes all around it. Again, it's to avoid having to drill in awkward areas and also screwing up your rear deck. Lastly, this uh, rear eight inch hole isn't as forgiving as these, meaning there isn't metal all around available for you to secure that sub and your sub without being secured correctly is gonna rattle. All right guys, so to get this rear speaker out, it's just gonna be three screws. You're just gonna need a rather small Phillips head just because here's the only tough part where you might not have enough space. So let me bring you in closer so you can see that. So the factory speaker, again, it's gonna have those three screws. So you're just gonna pull these out. Now this is our testing uh, vehicle. So that's why everything has kill mat on it. That's why that adapter plate is here. But since we didn't get to do the installation on the Acura that we first demonstrated on video, we still want to be able to show you how to do this. So we're using our demo vehicle to do so. So just ignore the kill mat. Everything else is going to be relatively similar. And this is just sound ending material to stop rattling for the upgraded sub. That's why it's here. So after you remove those three screws, you're going to... See, here's the kill mag getting us trouble because it's actually kind of developed some glue to the speaker. So now there we go, it's free. You can see there's the adapter I was telling you about before. So let's disconnect that. What you have to do is grab the sides and then pull down and that'll free up your speaker. And you could see this speaker was repaired at some point because it had also ripped. But all right, let me get the Infinity speaker here and we can try uh, installing it. All right guys, so something we didn't talk about uh, before is mounting because these speakers are already there. So here's our Infinity speaker again. Here's our mounting bracket. Here is some foam that you should put on the back of the speaker before you install it. So basically, this outer ring will get foam so that it sits properly uh, when it makes contact. You could also put it on the adapter depending what is making contact with what. For our instance, we aren't going to be using this because this adapter should sit flush, flush with this speaker. And then also this adapter will be on top of kill mat. So make a seal with that. You should use, you should always use this. Highly recommend it. Also our install isn't gonna be permanent. It's just for this uh, showcase purposes. So we aren't gonna be using it, but always make sure you use this. It'll make a tighter seal, stop any rattle and give you better bass response. So with this special adapter, um, your speaker, your aftermarket speaker, now it has the terminals where these would normally plug into. So you have your big one, which is white, and then your small one, which is black. And now you can just connect this in the back instead of having to do anything uh, with any cutting or soldering.
All right, guys, so here's the Infinity speaker on its own, and it looks like one hole will match up, um, but really no other ones will just because of the odd locations. So I'm going to now put the adapter down and see where the best location for our holes are. This is going to take me a little bit of time, so once I have it prepared, I'll come back and share it with you. All right, guys, so here are the locations we ended up with. So as you can see, this has speaker side, and here are the three screws. So this is an actual location that came. So that's where you could start, mount this one to the back, and then find your location. So as you can see, this is right next to one of the actual mounting holes for the speaker. And then this is on this edge, just a little bit up. Um, this would be, these three holes would make the perfect uh, location to mount this adapter. You mount the adapter first and then the speaker on top of it. All right guys, so we have our speaker ready to install. So this, you're just gonna plug it in. That's it. Um, then the other thing is these are labeled black and you know, positive so you don't have to worry about polarity or anything like that. You know they're gonna be set. Then you're gonna put your adapter down first, screw that down with the screws. Then you're gonna line up your speaker and now you'll put your speaker down so now again you're going to want a small screwdriver you're going to want to figure out where the speaker lines up with the adapter we pre-drilled earlier so we know there's a hole back there that we're getting started with Pull back here, we'll use that one first. Then we'll come to the opposite side. Use that one next. Then we'll hook uh, this one up next. And then lastly, we have this rear one. go Our rear ones in we're just gonna retighten this one because because of the kill mat it's rather loose there you go and there's our beautiful speaker with our adapter mounted in now of course you want to use that tape we talked about before but all right let me get the factory sound system hooked up and we'll take a look at this speaker All right, guys, so what we're taking a look at right now is through the audio control RTA, we're able to see the signal coming out of the factory amp for that rear right speaker. So the speaker that's in this rear right, you can see the wires coming out. You can see here we have it's a full range signal, but obviously the rear end of this signal, the base end, it has a weird sort of roll off and then some compensation here at around 100 hertz where the speaker can actually hit that base. Um, then you can see here some of your lower voices, it's kind of rolled off, but obviously that deep bass that you would hear from a sub is not here and then your voice is really where it shines and then it also takes some properties of the higher end spectrum so this is what you want to keep in mind when you're going to be replacing your factory speakers what this graph looks like and how your replacement is going to fit into this graph our infinities work really well because they cover this spectrum and can handle all of these frequencies all right guys so the last thing i want to talk to you about when it comes to speaker replacement is the space you have for your replacement speaker. So if you were looking at earlier in the video, you could see that the infinity with the plate and then the speaker itself rose, I would say a total of one inch. You have about half an inch to one inch here of forgiveness between this material and this lip. This is what's gonna sit uh, along the rear. And then this clip will also keep this separation between this grill and the speaker. Uh, if worse comes to worse and it is rubbing, you can actually cut this out um, with a flip with a flush cutter and begin trimming it away or grinding it down. 
uh, you can get more space. So you don't have to be too worried that the speaker is gonna stick up a little bit. That applies for the Sub 2. It has some room between it and the mounting surface on the rear deck. Also, if you have rattle, it's very often caused by this not sitting correctly or these not sitting correctly. One way to eliminate it is make sure these clips are here, make sure it's seated correctly. The other way is to plus some sound ending right along the edges to stop any vibrations. Um, the last piece I wanna to mention to you is our next video will be for the sub upgrade. So if you're interested in that, make sure to stick around. All right guys, just like any other cover, that rear cover had these little clips. You wanna make sure that you take them all out of this metal back here and put them back on. And then you wanna make sure you put pressure on the corners to them to go down. You should hear them click in. It's all clips, so just make sure that you get those in. Now, putting these back in, as you can see, these clips were missing, so it's not the it's not like I can do anything about them, but they hook into here, so it won't be the end of the world. What you want to do is the trick to getting this in all the way. So you actually you actually have to fully remove it. And to do that, you're just gonna go around the other side. How it comes. Now what you want to do is separate this. So you'll be able to pull it out now. Once you have this out, you're gonna reinsert this into here. Cause here's where you want it to go. Once you reinsert this, you wanna line it up so that it goes in the hole and it should stay on its own. So it should be outside, it should be on the back side like so on its own. Now, now your other side should be right here out. So now, we're gonna put this in first. So what you wanna do is, same as before, tilt it, tilt it like so, enough so you can get it in. There's that clip back there that you wanna line up, that clip right there, back there, you see it? All the way at the end. That's the clip you wanna line up with that hole. Then you want to line up the other holes. Then you should be able to get it like this. Then you just want to kind of, Now you're going to come with your side back air cut and clip and make sure it's facing the right orientation. And, oh, and just like that, it is in. Again, you have to take it out completely to put it in so that it goes in correctly. That's gonna be the end of the video. I mean, it's not the video we wanted to shoot, but we got everything the customer asked done. And I'll give you a little preview of this sub. But yeah, guys, for that sub, what we did was rerun the RCAs to the radio instead of that weird high input they had. Uh, and it just gave him a lot better sub control, and he's extremely happy about that. But alright guys, as always, I'm going to ask that you give the video a like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stuff from the Acura Audio Garage.